Hello, brothers and sisters in Heart Dwells family. So the Lord is wanting us all to go deeper into our hearts and to bring about healing of the soul. Many of our souls are fragmented by different trauma that has happened to us. We are conditioned like fowls in a dust to fall away the pain or trial, not realizing it created a negative effect on our soul if the pain wasn't dealt with properly. It creates wounds, if not healed, creates a trigger, then becomes a root in our soul affecting our hearts. When we have negative roots, they can be infested with all type of demons, assigned to cause havoc in our lives and in our relationships. We must first deal with the wounds and then begin to deal with the idols. Many times idols in our lives can come from wounds we have incurred, so we lift something else up in the throne of our hearts. That brings us more comfort, gives more affection and a sense of security more than we trust God. Jesus made it clear that Satan and his demons set up landmines for us daily to cause us to explode and react in our flesh. They know us so well, better than we know ourselves. But Jesus is wanting us to attain self-knowledge, to become self-aware, and know ourselves so we can see the enemy when he comes with temptations to cause more injury. We won't fall for it. During all of this, I receive the rhema. I want you to speak boldly and gently about the sins you see. Many times when I get the rhema, it's about those around me. And the Lord has wanted me to address something I've been seeing. However, this time, it was about me. He was showing me sins and idols in my heart. I didn't realize I knew I had. He wanted me to openly confess so that others would have the freedom to do so. One of my idols I realized I had is affection from my spouse. I had made his affection more sought after than the Lord's affection. I relished in the attention and would step away from the Lord to spend more time with him. When I wasn't getting that attention or there was distance between us, I found myself down, discouraged, so emotional, and feeling no desire to pray. I realized I had made my spouse's attention and affection an idol. Another idol is honor and respect, because growing up, I was always contended with in the area of leadership. I was called to lead, but the enemy always had someone assigned to frustrate that, criticize me, or cause strife, and that was a painful wound of rejection. Also, ministry became an idol. I found myself rushing to get out of prayer because of the time, wanting to start on ministry work because I had so much to do. I didn't yearn or desire to listen for his voice. I didn't make that a priority at all. During prayer, I would answer texts, phone calls, messages. I was so distracted in this way for a long time, until the Lord made it clear I had lost sight of my first love. Not the work. I lost sight of my first love. My first love should not be the work, but to be with Him, to know Him and love Him. Lord, please forgive me. Then He took me deeper, identifying roots that now had become triggers for me. Where did these roots come from? My roots were of abandonment, rejection, and betrayal, be it which is being lied to. Abandonment was rooted from my adolescence when my mom and dad separated. We continued to have a wonderful relationship as a family and still do, so I didn't think it would affect me until I came to the Lord. And when I had trials, I felt so alone, and it reared his ugly head in my marriage, where I felt anxiety when I was left alone. If someone walks away from me when we're walking together, or I'm speaking to someone, and they walk away, I felt the sting of abandonment, when they may have had no intention of that. It made me feel like no one understood me. It leads me to easily isolate myself or keep to myself while still having expectation of others. Rejection was rooted from hurtful words said to me by my schoolmates. Then again, my parents' separation, and especially when everyone, I mean everyone, left my side when I began to follow Jesus and share about the Blessed Mother and being a part of the refuge. That was one of the most painful trials and rejection I've ever experienced in my life. Truly forsaken by all, especially by those I loved and those I thought knew me. And I've dealt with that in various ways in the beginning of my marriage, when we were adjusting. In leadership, when someone contends with me or disrespects or dishonors me, I feel rejected. It makes me feel like I'm not good enough. I'm the problem. Something is wrong with me. Insecure feelings in this way leads me to need to prove myself or take control. Or rather, I just remove myself from the person, situation, or group altogether. I'm kind-hearted and friendly by nature. But this route made it always easy for me to cut people and things off cold turkey 
when I've done all that I can. And I just keep it moving. It also leads me to self-pity, then to selfishness, and justification of my actions, especially in marriage. Jealousy, rooted from my childhood when I was compared to my siblings. When I'm overlooked and dismissed and another's chosen instead of me. I had experiences of that in the church. Then if I could be honest in my marriage, it showed its head too. Jealous feelings. When I have these feelings, it leads me to compare, to be discontent, even resentful at the person who I have jealousy towards. It makes me overcompensate to get attention or get recognition. And then betrayal, being lied to. This became rooted when I started dating. In most of my relationships, I was lied to one way or the other. And also during my first business a project, I had a business partner who took advantage of me. I vouched for him when the heat came, even cried for him, coming to find out everything everyone said was true. He had lied to me. When this happens, I feel like a fool, which touches my pride, which the Lord is trying to get rid of. Also for the person who has a lack of respect for me and honor, which is pride. And then I start to doubt myself, guard my heart, and become suspicious about everything and lose trust. So you see, all of us have wounds, triggers, and roots. Jesus is wanting each of you to take some time to sit with him. Allow him to show you any past trauma you have filed away, but rather has injured your soul. He wants to bring healing to you. So we're going to do an exercise now and play the song from Mother Claire called Healing Waters. I would encourage each of you to sit before the Lord in adoration. Then have a journal and pen and ask him to show you areas in your soul that are fragmented and trapped because of trauma, pain, or wounds. It can be as big as abuse or as small as your boss yelling at you and not realizing it affected you. Ask him to also show the idols in your heart. Write down, Lord, is there anything I love more than you? Then wait for the Holy Spirit to bring it to your mind. Usually it will come in a series of thoughts even maybe pictures even. Lord, is there anything I trust more than you? Then wait for the Holy Spirit to show it to you. Lord, is there anything I worship more than you? Then wait for the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Then ask Jesus, Lord, show me any roots I have that have turned into triggers. When he shows you, write them down. Then ask yourself, how did that experience make you feel? What did that experience you had lead you to believe about yourself or about others? So take this moment and time with Jesus and the Holy Spirit.
I hope the Lord revealed much to you, and you too are now able to speak boldly and gently about the sins you see in yourself, asking the Lord to heal these areas, and then afterwards repeat this prayer with me. I disable and destroy to the root all curses and demons lying in wait set to detonate. In Jesus' name, and all devices set inside my body, to hinder or harm in any way. All spirits of oppression, Holy Spirit, thank you for revealing these roots and reveal even more devices and teach me how to pray. Amen. God bless you, family, until the next message.